Hello guys, uh, welcome back. This is Dr. Hadi here and today's topic is suicidal enzyme and suicide inhibition. A very small topic. Uh, it is interesting. So I wish I thought I could uh, discuss this uh, with you. Of course, the topic is from enzymology. Suicide inhibition and suicide enzyme. There is a big difference that we must learn. In suicide inhibition, look at here, we have the diagram of enzyme. So this is our enzyme. This is not the substrate, you know. This is inhibitor. In this topic, there is no need to, uh, to mention the substrate because our topic is inhibition. So the inhibitor here, you, you can see the shape of the inhibitor is like this. It is like this okay the shape of the inhibitor I is like this it is near to the enzyme but not attached yet here if you see the 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 inhibitor I is attached with the enzyme and of course there will be a bond will be there between the enzyme and the inhibitor this bond is a very weak bond you know that when something attaches with the enzyme with the help of a loose bond this kind of inhibition is called reversible inhibition you know loose bond reversible inhibition but what happens after attachment this enzyme bring some changes in that inhibitor this is something new that i'm going to share with you we we discussed enzyme inhibition we discussed competitive inhibition non-competitive inhibition this is something new topic look the inhibitor has attached here with enzyme now this enzyme itself is going to bring some changes in the shape of that inhibitor and now look the shape of the inhibitor is being changed here who changed the shape of the inhibitor enzyme itself the shape of the inhibitor has been changed in such a way that in the beginning the bond was very weak i was weak attachment but now the bond is very strong now the bond is very very strong bond here this bond is very strong it is clear crystal clear that why the bond is strong because this this, this time the shape has been changed now it, it will make a strong covalent bond but at, at this stage the shape was something else and a strong covalent bond could not be formed but once the shape is changed there is a possibility of strong covalent bond now what will happen do you know if an inhibitor make a strong covalent bond this process will be called irreversible irreversible in this case it was reversible usually it happens we have discussed this uh, phenomenon of reversible emission and this is something in a strange case uh, that something which was uh, Irreversible in the beginning becomes irreversible after the formation of strong covalent bond. Now this enzyme is permanently blocked. This enzyme is permanently blocked. The shape is okay. Enzyme shape is okay, but it is permanently blocked because of this strong covalent bond. Now this pro this phenomena is called suicide inhibition. I Means it the enzyme itself did suicide by inhibiting itself. That's what is called suicide emission. Now, one confusion is here. The student may think that this phenomena is called suicide inhibition, and the enzyme might be expected to called a suicidal enzyme, which is not correct. In this topic, there is no concept of su suicidal enzyme. The topic that you have just heard is called suicidal inhibition or suicide inhibition 
This enzyme cannot be called suicidal in enzyme. The process can be called suicide inhibition, but you cannot call this enzyme suicidal enzyme. Suicidal enzyme is something else that I will explain you. Let me give you some example of the suicide inhibition. The very first example is allopurinol. This allopurinol, when attached with the xanthine oxidase is an enzyme, of course this is an inhibitor for this enzyme. When it attaches with the xanthine oxidase enzyme, it makes loose bond with xanthine oxidase. After some time, this enzyme changes the shape of that structure and then this structure will become alloxanthine. This is the original structure, the initial structure, and this is the later on structure, alloxanthine. This will make a loose bond. This will make what? A loose bond. And this will make a strong bond. So that is why we say this is a very good example of suicide inhibition. Another example is 5-fluorouracil. You know it is an anti-cancer drug. 5-fluorouracil. It attaches with the enzyme thymidyl synthase. Thymidyl synthase is an enzyme. The purpose of this is to block this enzyme. In the beginning, it is, it is irreversible, but after some time, the same enzyme changes the shape of the 5-fluorouracil so that it becomes fluorodeoxyuryl dilate. And this will make a strong bond with this enzyme, make a strong covalent bond. And this is another example of suicide inhibition. Some other examples are aspirin and cyclooxygenase. Aspirin is a very common drug that we use for a headache. Yeah. This aspirin, when attaches with the cyclooxygenase enzyme, the shape of the aspirin is changed and it, be, it is converted from irreversible to reversible, from reversible to irreversible moiety. Another example is a very well known example that is penicillin. We, a pharmacist, know very well that penicillin is a very well known antibiotic. So, very well known antibiotic means we treat infection with this drug. Penicillin react with an enzyme present in the bacterial cell wall. This enzyme is present in the bacterial cell wall, transpeptidase, and this enzyme help bacteria to synthesize the cell wall, to help bacteria to divide. Uh, uh, not to divide but to help bacteria for its cell wall synthesis. When you block this enzyme transpeptidase, the bacteria will be unable, will not be able to synthesize its cell wall. As a result, there will be no reproduction for the bacteria. So, this is another example. Now, come to the suicide enzyme. What is suicide enzyme? In this case, enzyme will self-destroy itself. Enzyme will destroy itself. That's why it's called having the property of self catalyzed destruction. Self destruction. How? Let me give you an example. We have something reactant, and this reactant is going to convert from A into B. This is our product. This is our product. And who did this? By the help of this enzyme. Okay, the enzyme. Now, we have discussed uh, different process, different mechanism of enzyme regulation. I mean, how enzymes are regulated inside the body. Our body works in our enzyme work in our body. Different enzymes work in our body. Their, enzyme, the, 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 their activity must be regulated. Enzyme जो तुनी भी काम करते हैं, उनके काम को regulate करना लाजमी है. कि अगर वो कम है तो ज़्यादा होना चाहिए, ज़्यादा है तो कम होना चाहिए. So this is a kind of regulation process. Suppose the product become very high, high product. Now we don't want the product to be high. So in this case, in order to stop this process, in order to stop the process, we cannot stop the, this enzyme by any other means like feedback inhibition. But in this case, this enzyme, no one from our side, it has its, it is it, it itself, its property. It is the characteristics of that property that this enzyme will self uh, cat catalyze itself like this. This enzyme 
will not stop but it will be broken down uh, let me give you that this kind of diagram okay the enzyme has destruct itself now we have the reactant a but this reactant is not going to convert into into the product b because enzyme is not there enzyme has totally destroyed itself this kind of enzyme that we can say it has performed suicide this is called suicidal enzyme so suicide enzyme and suicide inhibition are two different things suicide inhibition in suicide inhibition the enzyme is is still present but it is permanently blocked its shape is intact in this case the shape is the shape of the enzyme is changed uh, here uh, the inhibitor the case was for inhibitor the inhibitor changes its shape by the help of the enzyme there is no such case of inhibitor changes its shape there is no case of inhibition this is not inhibitor the a is not inhibitor that is going to react with the enzyme here anything that we were discussing here this was the inhibitor which was reacting with the enzyme so this was enzyme inhibition this cannot be called the, pro the topic of enzyme inhibition. However, we, we can see that enzyme is being inhibited. The activity of enzyme is being inhibited, but there is no inhibitor. This is the original reactant of the enzyme. The original reactant of the enzyme. We just, we just want to control the, the process. We just want to stop the process. So as a result, the enzyme itself destroy himself and as a result, the, reactant will, the reaction will stop. So this is what we call suicide inhibition and that was called as suicide inhibition. The two uh, different topics. I hope you like and uh, uh, you got this topic. See you on the next video, inshallah. Take care. Allah Hafiz.